Have the last two seasons been a success for Boston College? I don't really think so, but what would make the next season a success? I'll give you three reasons why today's show. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. I'm also the editor and publisher of bcbulletin.com, part of the Fan Nation and Sports Illustrated Network. Check out all my work there. So, the last two years for Boston College football, have they been a complete success? No. I mean, it only takes a a, a observant mind to look at the record and say, okay, they went 6-5 in 2020 under Jeff Halfley. Eh, you know, against a more ACC-heavy schedule, that's that's a bit of a success. And last year, 6-6. But really, is that successful? No. It's more the same as what you had under Steve Adazio. It's it's that right around 500, winning the games you're supposed to win, not winning the games you're not supposed to win. So on today's show, I want to look at what those three things they could do that could help them win and really make them a successful season, make it a successful season for BC. And I have three things I want to get into. The first thing I want to see is Boston College improving in areas that they haven't improved in the last two years. Specifically, a few specific um, positional groups. The first being the defensive line. Okay, so we've had Marcus Valdez and Sheeta Salah as defensive ends for the last two years. They haven't really, you know, they've done some nice things. They haven't been a a, uh, hindrance, but they also haven't been an asset for that team. They need to get better. They need to find guys that will be the future of that program. And so this year... At that position, you want to see someone like Donovan Azaraku. You want to see someone like uh, Nito Ekpala, two sophomores that got to see some playing time in 2020, step up to become more of a positional threat. Now, Azaraku, he played in, I believe, all 12 games last year, at least in some capacity. He was more of the third defensive end. He got his chances to get some really specific uh, plays in there as well. So he might be the guy that takes that next step. But as I said on bcbulletin.com, Nito Akpala is someone I look at and go, ooh, he's got some intangibles that really put him above other players. Now, he's a Georgia kid. He didn't have a huge offer list coming out of high school. Uh, You know, Liberty, Coastal Carolina, I think Vanderbilt was his only power five, but he's a track star. And at 6'1", 240 pounds. Now, that is what you want. That's the kind of of, um, frame that really might flourish in Jeff Halfley's offense. So, Nito Akpala, and, and Azaraku, who I still think, he, you watch him on the field, and Azaraku, he's 6'2", too, too, you know, he's an edge player, plays outside linebacker, defensive end. You see him and you're like, okay, he looks a little small out there, but I think he's bulked up a little bit. I'd love to see both of these guys solidify this position so in case someone like Shida Salah either gets hurt or isn't getting to that point, you can bring in one of those other guys, or you can switch them in. Jeff Halfley loves to cycle in players in and out on his defensive side. So having those guys play really solidify that position. And it's not just the defensive line I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the other hog mollies out there, the offensive line. Now, BC has four new offensive linemen. We've talked about this ad nauseum. I'll give it to you again. They're all younger guys. Sophomore, Ozzy Trapillo. Redshirt freshman, center Drew Kendall, other tackle. So you have two tackles here. You have Jack Conley at right tackle. He's a junior. And you also have senior Finn Durstein. Now, you have the youth. You have Trapillo, Kendall, and Con- uh, and then you have Conley, who's a little young, but not really. And then Durstein, who's been around this program since 2017. So you have all these players coming back that are going to be getting starter minutes because they're going to have to sandwich with Christian Mahogany. Guys, I've heard the rumors. I don't know anything about it. Remember, Boston College is very quiet about injury reports, so I'm not going to get into whatever that rumor was. You can look it up on Twitter if you want to look into it more. But just like you, I've watched the offensive line come in every year with all this pomp and circumstance and 
to have guys play well. You had Zion Johnson play well for two years. Christian Mahogany played really well last year. Alex Lindstrom played pretty well. But they weren't consistent. And the offensive line was not one of the best in the country, even though they had the t- every right to be. This year, this would be a perfect opportunity. Just like the defensive line, I want to see them take the next step. I want to see this offensive line take that next step too. To be good all the time. And it might be tougher this year. When you ha- I mean, when you have all these different moving parts coming into an offensive line, it might be hard. But I'm interested to see how new offensive line coach, Coach Googs, Dave DeGuglielmo, who has NFL and college experience, would love to see what he can do with a fresh crop of young guys. Because if it was Matt Applebaum, the offensive line coach who left for the Miami Dolphins at the end of this year, I'd be a little worried. I'd be very worried about it. And it's I, it may be a knock on him. It just seemed like that offensive line never got it under him. If Googs can get them going, if he can get this group back to dominant force or, or good, if they're good this year, like solid to good, that offense is going to be incredible because Phil Dracovic will have more time than he had all last year. Uh, there was a pro football focus uh, tweet out that ranked quarterbacks on the amount of time they had to throw the ball. And Phil Dracovic had the most, I believe he had the most time to throw it. He might have even more this year if he doesn't have players breathing down his throat. So those are two positions. I'd love to see some development. I want to see Halfley. He, it's now all his guys on this team, right? Most of the Adazio guys have moved on. There's a few here and there. Obviously, Zay Flowers is an Adazio guy. And there's, you know, um, you know, you got some guys on the defensive side, Josh DeBerry and uh, and Marcus Valdez and Sheeta Salah. But the more that Halfley infuses his guys and gets them a chance to develop, to let those Akpalas, Azarakus, the Drew Kendalls, Ozzy Trapillos, get those guys a chance to really solidify their role within the program that would be a mammoth step in the right direction for Jeff Halfley and an absolute sign of success for Boston College football now in our second segment I'm going to look at the old schedule talk about some of the things they're going to have to do to make this a successful season but let's chat about our good old friends at betonline.net they're your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info find all the latest sports developments news and odds including this year's basketball championship matchup the nhl hockey conference finals major league baseball and of course all the latest fighting news from mma and ufc to boxing Bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about about their trends or action. Man, if you love player props, they I found on their site earlier this week player props, and they are so much fun. You can bet on home runs on the NBA uh, finals. You can get back to how many points Al Horford's going to score. Um, those are I find it even more fun than just the regular stats, and those are something you can find easily on Bet Online. So make sure to head on over to Bet Online, where the game starts. Now, welcome back to Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, AJ Black. We're talking about signals or steps for success for BC football this year. Obviously, going 12 and 0 and winning a national title and going 15 and 0 overall would be quite the measure of success. But we're being realistic here. What can Boston College do to get get the program to that next step because as we said in our first segment they've done some nice things here and there but have they really taken that next step it's hard to argue that they have but they're right on the precipice of doing that so what's the next thing they could do the next thing is obviously beating a better team than they are and boston college has quite the opportunities on their schedule to do such a thing remember boston college has not beaten a top 25 AP ranked team since 2014 when they beat USC in the red bandana game. It has been eight seasons since they've won a ranked game. That is absolutely absurd. And it really drives home the point that it's tough for all of you Boston college fans out there to really get behind a team that really hasn't been relevant in beating these teams that they need to beat. But I think this is a chance for them to do that. This is a chance for them to get out of that hole and, and get a top 25 win. Get in the top 25. And I think that happens this year. If they can do it, there's some easy, op- not easy, but golden opportunities. And the one that stands out the most to me, the one game that I say I have circled is the red bandana game against Clemson. Boston College has played the Clemson Tigers twice under Jeff Halfley. Both games in, in 
uh, Death Valley, one with Dennis Grossell at quarterback, and one with Phil, uh, Phil Dracovic and his bum shoulder uh, the first season. In both games, Boston College lo- lost by six points. This could be the year for BC. The big questions are on their side this year. Can DJ Uyagale become an elite quarterback? Will that offense figure it out? Will their coordinators that are both brand new now that Tony Elliott and Brent Venables are at new programs, can they figure it out? So there's lots of question marks, and BC gets them, I believe, with the sixth game of the season. It's at home. It's the red bandana game. This is the absolute perfect. Last year, I thought was the perfect opportunity, and then Phil Dracovic went down. But this year is the absolute pinnacle of opportunities to knock off Clemson. Now, it's not going to be super easy. Clemson's defensive line is going to be absolutely absurdly good. And against BC's new offensive line, I get a little bit of the heebie-jeebies thinking about that. That being said, if they can just keep Phil Jakovic upright, he has the talent to, to, to put some points on the board. Something I'm not sure Clemson can do. So if BC goes out there and beats Clemson, that is a absolute massive feather in the cap of Jeff Halfley. That shakes all those demons. Can't beat Clemson, which you know Jeff Halfley has said multiple times is a big time check mark on his on his whiteboard. It gives you a top twenty five win. It puts you in the topper upper echelon of the ACC Atlantic. So that one game in itself could shake up this program in a positive way in a bunch of different ways. But it's not just the Clemson game. They could go out there and they could win that game. There's other ranked opponents that are going to probably end up on their schedule. Now, I, I always say that there's going to be ranked opponents, and then things happen, and every you know teams that you don't expect to be. I mean, who thought Wake Forest was going to be a top 15 team in the country last year? I don't think many people did, but they did. This year, you go in with the expectation of NC State being ranked, Notre Dame being ranked, Wake Forest being ranked, and a Boston College team that has a secondary that should be excellent again a defense that should improve and an offense that we already know has some talent that could put them in the toppers top upper echelon in terms of points per game. Could they pull off a win against those schools? Now there's a big factor here that you have to consider wake forest road game, NC state road game, Notre Dame road game. That's always a little tougher. That being said, NC State and Wake Forest, are they really that elite in terms of like home team atmospheres? No, they're not. Notre Dame's a different story, but Boston College has their historical uh, success against them. And you know Phil Dracovic and John McNulty and uh, George Takis, their new tight end, they're going to want those wins too. So I'm looking at BC getting a solid win this season, at least one. Man, if they get two, they're going to be a top 25 team. You get two wins out of those four. You beat, say, Clemson and no, NC State or Clemson and Wake Forest. You're looking at a, a top 25 Boston College team. You're looking at a team that's in good shape going into 2023. So that would be my next step, getting that marquee win. Because how many times have you talked about it? Like, when has BC won a game that really matters? When has BC won a game that they weren't expected to win? And yeah, there's been games they were, you know, three point underdogs that they won, or you know, kind of on the same wavelength as that team. But they haven't won a big game in a long time. They need it this year, and this is the perfect opportunity with Jeff Halfley and Phil Jakovic and Zay Flowers to go out there and do that. Now, in our final segment, I'm gonna go jump in and tell you what what the biggest factor is in terms of a successful season for Boston College. Now, save time and money when you use Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain and auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have the computers with access to rockauto.com. In your pocket, you can do it yourself. You're going to save time and money 
up to 30, 50, or even 100% for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you can need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. So go explore their easy-to-use website today or to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And write Locked On in their How'd You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will never ev will ever need. rockauto.com This is Locked On Boston College, and you know what I love when I have a snack? It's my good old-fashioned Built Bars. Don't you love a chewy, chocolatey brownie? What about a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? It's so good. Now, what if I could tell you you could have all that good chocolatey deliciousness, plus 17 grams of protein? You'd call me insane, but I'm not. Because I'm telling you, with Built Bar, you're going to get those with the caramel brownie bars. They're available right now, but you can act fast because they are a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus, all the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 70 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar it's absurd and they are so good i love my built bars i have one every day around 2 30 it gives me the energy i need to get through a long and tiring day now there are a million reasons why you should choose built bar but for now let's say that the caramel brownie will rock your world and i'm not telling you this it's not an understatement at all so go to built.com and use promo code lock 15 and you're gonna get 15 percent off your order again use promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off at built.com welcome back to locked on boston college aj black here we're talking about things boston college needs to do to be successful in the 2022 season first we talked about progression in uh, some of the positions that they really need to grow at second thing be the top 25 team number three I mean, it's got to be win more than seven games, right, folks? Like, how many years it's been since 2008 that Boston College has won more than seven games? They haven't won a bowl game since 2016. They haven't beaten a top 25 team since 2014. But the bigger success, the biggest success module for me, the biz, uh, measure of success, excuse me, is to beat eight teams this year. And I'd like to see eight wins before the bowl game. Get your shot for nine. If BC wins eight regular season games and only loses four and goes on and wins a bowl game, you know the program is starting to go in the direction that Jeff Halfley promised and that many of us envisioned him bringing Boston College to. But in order for that to happen, so all the other things that we just mentioned, beating top 25 teams, beating teams that you're not supposed to beat, progression on the defensive and offensive line, all of these things will have to happen in order to hit that mark. Now, looking at the schedule, there are teams that Boston College should absolutely beat. You have the e easy wins. You have three. You have at least three or four e wins that are just you. Sh you should be able to mark those down as win right now, and that is Maine, Rutgers, and UConn. You can also include Syracuse if you want to, and Duke. That's five wins right there. Now, this is all predicated on Phil Dracovic staying healthy. We saw what happened last year, and I'm still not sold that Emmett Moorhead will be able to push them over that hump right now. He may next year, but I'm not sure he'll be able to do it now. So you have five wins. Can you pull three more wins out of the rest of that schedule? So given what I said earlier, really want to go for that triumphant of, uh, of success. You win against Clemson, right? There's six. You beat Virginia Tech. There's seven. Just pick one other one. Virginia Tech, I think, is winnable. Clemson, I said, they're, they're going to be my chic win for BC to win. Can they beat Louisville? Can they beat NC State? Could they beat uh, Florida State? It's not that out of the realm of possibility that that could happen. That's eight wins right there. You go on and you win that. You win your ninth game in the bowl. You have it. It doesn't seem that odd. I don't see, you know, when you look at bet on lines uh, over under right now, it's eight, it's six and a half, which for many Boston College fans, it's like easy, set, take the over there. But if you took it last year, you would have lost. You take it this year, I think you're going to win. I think Phil Dracovic knows what he needs to do to stay healthy. Last year was a freak accident uh, injury, but... When you have a, he might have watched some of those games. He might have watched Patrick Garwo near the end zone and go, "Okay, 
maybe I don't need to do it next time. I'm just going to hand it to the bowling ball behind me. He's going to do it. And I won't get hurt in a freak accident. Maybe when I go and slide, I go for a run, I'm not, not going to take those extra hits. I'm going to slide. Those little decisions might be hard given his DNA and how he plays. But if he does all those things, he should stay healthy. And if Phil Dracovic stays healthy, I'm telling you, eight wins does not seem too freaky with for me. Especially when you have Zay Flowers streaking down one end, you have Jalen Gill, and you have Jaden Williams out there. You have a talented off uh, weapons for him to throw to. Plus, as I just mentioned, Pat Garwo, the guy I slept on last year, and that sounded weirder than I think it should have came out, but the guy I didn't give enough credit to is a good running back. He can spell uh, Dracovic. He can make offenses more uh, honest when they're defending against BC. All of that, plus the secondary that BC has on the defensive line, defensive end, I just don't think eight wins seems that odd or that big of a, of a reach for this squad. That's why I think when I see these sites that put BC as a dark horse, Boston College as a potential sleeper team, I don't think they're that far off. Now, I know many of us are jaded as Boston College followers, and many of you as fans have been hurt enough to know that, like, okay, AJ, slow your roll. This is a team that always wins six or seven games. But when is that going to end? It's going to end sometime. You can't just keep doing that over and over again. Something's going to have to happen. This might be the year it does. This might be the year that Boston College can break through that ceiling. And they're going to do it with improved offensive line play and defensive line play, a win against a top 25 team, and eight wins. Telling you right now, I think I can do it. This is AJ Black. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for another fun week on this podcast. Next week, we'll dive even more into some more summer talk. Hopefully, we'll have some news to break, all that good stuff. And there's a big-time recruiting weekend going on on campus. Hopefully, we'll have some commitments to talk about as well. If you have not done so already, follow me on Twitter at AJBlack underscore BC or at LockedOnBC on Twitter as well. Thank you all. We'll see you again soon. Take care.